to Simcha, a celebration of life. I'm your host, Aaron Halevi. The Friends of Zion Museum in Jerusalem opened its doors in April 2015. This unique institution portrays the story of the support for the Jewish people and nation of Israel by non-Jews, from the first Christian Zionists of the 19th century who encouraged Theodor Herzl to those who played active roles in the establishment of the State of Israel. When we were developing the Friends of Zion Museum, uh, we didn't want the museum to be something that's just filled with antiquities. You know, there's a lot of museums where you go through and you see a, a very old book or, or you see a piece of, of art that's ancient or uh, a relic from a, a bygone era. And that's very interesting and that's very special. But we wanted people to be able to come here and go through a journey, to, to really feel like they were a part of that experience like they were really a part of uh, Lord Wingate's experience or Robert you know, uh, Patterson's experience or, or uh, you know, the Timber family's experience, that they were really a part of that journey. And uh, we decided the best way that we could do that was with technology and to do it in such a way that it provoked people on an intellectual level and an emotional level. And so that's really what we, we've tried to do here, is create an experience, create a technological experience that pulls people through this journey and allows them to be a part of that story so that, that when they leave this place, they can take that story with them. This over here is a 3D model of the State of Israel with actual size and, and, and uh, true proportion. One of the goals of this room is to connect people who are walking around Israel with their Bible to what Israel looks like today. Now if you look on the ground here, you'll see a light and everything that you see here, this is the tour. here that we, we chose the tribes, which is biblical. This is filmed with uh, drones and helicopters that flew throughout Israel. It's original footage. Music is originally composed for the museum. Simon Perez told us when he was through the museum, he said he's never seen Israel look so beautiful. Here am I in the Zin Valley, in the heart of Israel's Negev Desert. 3,000 years ago, the children of Israel passed through this valley on their way from Egypt to Canaan in fulfillment of a divine promise. No nation has ever been destroyed again and again and then reborn. But these people did precisely that and in the same place after two millennia. Even the skeptics have called it a miracle. The Friends of Zion Heritage Center pays tribute to their story by celebrating a remarkable group of men and women, non-Jews, who helped the people of the promise return to the land of their birthright. For them, it was a here am I moment. May you be inspired by their story, and may you too say, here am I, Hanani. Welcome back. The Friends of Zion Museum invites visitors to an exceptional one-hour tour that captivates the senses. The five-story building that houses the museum in downtown Jerusalem has been transformed into a high-tech interactive museum that takes visitors on a journey from the time of Abraham to the present. By using spectacular 3D presentations, 
unique lighting, touch screens, and an original music score. During the more than four years of design and development, this museum was dreamed and planned to be unlike any other project in Israel. Welcome to the Friends of Zion Museum. Um, this is the first entrance where, where groups arrive. This behind me here is what we call our Impressions Lab. Um, on the iPads on the wall are different people's impressions of the museum, of Israel, of their tour guide, of their entire experience. What happens is people over here uh, record in a, our uh, state-of-the-art recording booths, and their um, recordings, their impressions, go online um, to Facebook, to, uh, to the world, and to our website. Of course, they also get emailed to uh, the individual. And uh, they then have the ability to connect with multiple generations so that rabbis can connect with their congregations, pastors can connect with their congregations. Uh, when we had uh, NBA star Omri Kasti come through here, people are very interested to know who these people are, what they had to say about Israel, and uh, this is one of the uh, social media, really, is one of the primary ways of doing it. Over here, we have another element of very unique technology, um, which we're, this is um, a way of people not only finding all of their testimonials, but they can also use a Twitter cam. Twitter cam is, uh, again, very advanced technology. People record a tweet, they look at themselves, and then it immediately tweets out to their Twitter accounts. So they, you, you look at the Twitter mirror and, and tweet out. So it allows, we, we take every element of social media, ele every element of technology that you'll see a lot of firsts over here, and every element throughout this museum, you'll see that we use it to, to uh, reach our goal. Something that we are, are very excited about at, at FOZ is the fact that everything that we could do in the nation of Israel, we did do. And so at one point in time, we had 125 people uh, working in Israel just on the media. And so that's roughly 25% of everybody in the nation of Israel that does this type of media in general. The carpentry work, the woodwork, uh, all of the resources that we could do and produce in Israel and make in Israel and do with Israelis, uh, we did, and we did that because uh, we're here, uh, the Friends of Zion Museum is here to support Israel and support the Jewish people. And it just wouldn't be right uh, for us to, you know, produce these things in America uh, w when the, the media and the outlet and, and everything that FOZ is about is about supporting the Jewish people. Let's do it in conjunction with the Jew Jewish people. Let's do it with them. And so that's what we've done. The ancient Hebrew text says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. He seemed to have found such a man in the deserts of Canaan. His name was Abram, son of Terah, from Ur of the Chaldees. According to the ancient writings, one day God appeared to Abram and spoke the words that would give birth to the nation of Israel. God told Abram, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. In this room, we're going to meet Moses, Ezekiel, and Abraham. Uh, everything uh, was created here in Israel, with the exception of the floor that you're standing on. And I'll ask you to uh, really see and uh, take note of this floor. It's called onyx. It is a type of marble. It's actually uh, translucent. And underneath the entire floor that you're standing on, and in fact, for over 200 meters of this museum, there is an LED screen underneath this floor. You will no longer be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. Can you imagine how impossible this promise must have seemed to Abraham? Nevertheless, in total faith, Abraham said, Hineni, here am I, to the call of God. For a Christian person that comes to Israel, there's a, a definitely a very important religious uh, significance to Jerusalem. You know, if, if they're a Christian that believes in the Bible, that uh, reads their Bible and, and studies it, uh, you know, the Bible is filled with uh, scriptures about 
uh, praying for the peace of Jerusalem, about supporting uh, God's people, uh, about blessing uh, the people of the promise, uh, the, the Abrahamic promise. And um, those are, are things that Christians hold dear. Uh, they believe in, and they're, they're you know, biblically relevant uh, to their lives. As the nation of Israel settled in exile among the nations, the prayer continued year after year around the world. Next year, in Jerusalem. But as the years became decades, then centuries, for many, the promise seemed more and more a distant dream of the past, no more. Most of the Jews resigned themselves to building new lives among the nations where they had gone. More often, they encountered rejection, persecution, even faced death at the hands of those who did not believe the promise. And they did, had no intention of letting it be fulfilled. Yet, the Jews found others who believed in the ancient prophecies, who offered their help to see it fulfilled. In their own way, like the patriarchs of old, when their time came, they too would say, Here am I to the promise and the people of the be called Christian Zionists. When we were developing the Friends of Zion Museum, it, it did take years, but the process was very organic. Uh, actually, we sat around this table, uh, a bunch of us sat around this table, and we talked about uh, what we wanted to do, and we dreamed about what we wanted to do. And so we would sit together, and we would uh, just ask the question, you know, hey, uh, let's show uh, those, those dreamers. Let's show those non-Jews who really had a dream uh, for the Jewish people and for the nation of Israel, and how can we do that? And, uh, wow, you know, maybe let's do that. Could we do it with video mapping, you know? Uh, could, we, could we do that video mapping on wood sculptures? And so we really just brainstormed and dreamed uh, as a team together here, and uh, that's how the process came about. So in this room, we have four hand-carved statues that each one represents a story of a person, a non-Jewish person, who helped the Jewish people in the state of Israel. The technology that's used here is unique video mapping technology. We've taken these uh, inanimate uh, sculptures, really, and we project video onto them, bringing them to life basically before your eyes. Uh, we ask that each group stands underneath these uh, domes which uh, give the speakers just for that group, and uh, people walk around these four uh, statues uh, as you see in this room. When we were, were working out how to, to really narrate the story, how to really tell this story, you know, we had the help of some tremendously creative and talented people, uh, some great companies and, and some, uh, some fantastic individuals. Uh, but really, I think that the, the, the story of, you know, those founders early on was, was based with us wanting to show the, the, the groundwork for the nation of Israel and make a connection, uh, really, with what's in the Bible. Make a connection with the biblical, with the ancient, and show people that that ties in uh, from the past all the way to today. And then even uh, the dreamers, you know, we wanted to show that there were people that uh, a long time ago, uh, back in the days when, um, when being a, a supporter of the Jewish people as a non-Jew would be unheard of, uh, there were people like Iman who, who had done a, a plethora of things with his life, from the Red Cross to uh, the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, was really one of the first people uh, that was a Christian that stood up and said, you know what, I'm a Christian Zionist. I believe uh, in the Jewish people and the nation of Israel and how special that is. And, uh, you know, we wanted to show that there were visionaries. We wanted to show that there were people in positions of power and people with uh, know-how who used their skills and their knowledge and, and their authority to help bring about the nation of Israel when, uh, you know, there were Jews here doing their best to make a safe home for themselves. And the light from the darkness was a really a natural, organic uh, a choice for us uh, because the Holocaust was you know, the darkest time in human history. Uh, I don't think that there's a period in human history that could be darker than what that period of time was. 
But in that darkness, there were good people. You know, in that darkness, there were really lights in the darkness that, uh, that combated that in every way that they could. And that's what their life uh, became about. And telling those stories and, and showing how impactful a life can be. Uh, you know, I love that lights in the darkness segment. Um, particularly Suki Hari uh, in that story is very fascinating for me just personally. And it's fascinating for me personally because in World War II, my grandfather was fighting the Japanese. And to think that here's a precious Japanese man who is risking his life to save Jews during the Holocaust. And he's doing it because he's a good person. He's doing it because he's got love in his heart. And you know what? Love doesn't have a uh, nationalistic value. And that's a very special tale. In Hungary, 400,000 Jews had already been shipped and boxcarized to the death camp of Auschwitz. Despite all the danger, Raoul Wallenberg risked his life and volunteered to go to Hungary as a diplomat for Sweden. In the dead of winter, Wallenberg joined the thousands of Jewish prisoners in the death marches to Auschwitz, trying to save anyone he could. He harbored tens of thousands of Jews in buildings he bought as Swedish diplomatic property. The Nazis couldn't touch them. They were on Swedish sovereign soil, or so he convinced the Nazis. One day, he jumped up on a train to Auschwitz, handing out as many passports as hands could reach up to grab them, then demanded the Nazi guards release his citizens. He even convinced the Germans not to blow up the Budapest ghetto and murder the thousands of innocent lives still trapped inside. Raoul Wallenberg saved more than 100,000 Jews. He said, I could never return to Stockholm knowing I had not done everything possible to save the Jews. Around you are beams of light. Within each one is the name of a person who was saved by courageous Christians. Extend the palm of your hand and meet some of those whose lives were spared by the conviction of these light and the darkness. Theodore Herzl once wrote, if you will it, there's no dream. No words would apply more clearly to the recent opening of the Friends of Zion Museum in Jerusalem. For centuries, biblical prophecies of Jews returning to their homeland seemed like only a distant dream. Yet a dream remembered year after year, with Jews repeating the promise, next year in Jerusalem. Every place has a vision and really a mission or purpose. And our purpose here is we want to see every single person, every single tourist, every single individual that we can fit through the doors to come here and leave being a person that really stands up, that says, here am I, that believes in the Jewish people, that supports the Jewish people, that supports uh, the nation of Israel. And that's really our why. That's our, our reason for doing this. Uh, something else that we really discovered when we built the Friends of Zion Museum was that uh, about half of the people that come here and visit us are Israelis. And so for us to be able to share a story of hope, uh, to show that there's good people in the world that support Israel, that love the Jewish people, that believe in the Jewish people and are rooting for them, well, that's just really our privilege to do. So behind me are uh, 32 touch screens. This is, uh, to our knowledge, the world's largest digital mural. It was hand painted as one piece, digitally scanned, animation was added, and uh, at some places there's also sound added. In this room is a completely interactive room. We invite you to come, to touch the screen, and uh, you will see the characters come to life before your eyes, a little bit of uh, text as to why we chose them, and uh, you'll be able to uh, meet the various characters. So one of the things that's been the most special for me in doing this
has been uh, those Israeli people that have come in and they've gone through the experience, they've gone through the journey, they've heard the stories of heroes through history, and afterwards they come to me and they go, you know what, you know my, uh, my, my father, my grandfather was actually saved by uh, this person. Uh, you know, my grandmother uh, was brought in uh, by, you know, such and such an individual. And to hear those tales and to, to kind of feel the weight of those generations that are here because somebody uh, decided to stand up against the darkness has just been such a, a really source of joy uh, for me in doing all of this. It's been really special. For some, it was being their duty. For more, a conviction of the heart. Ward Wingate, Harry Truman, John Patterson, But a glimpse of a great mosaic, defenders of the promise, friends of the people of Israel, custodians of the covenant. Each one said, here am I for their call came. Someday, somewhere, at a moment in your life, you may have such a call, an opportunity to pass the torch of this promise forward. Your decision to determine the future of the promise of Israel. What will you do? Will you say, here am I, as these have done? If you say yes in your moment of decision, you will become part of this mosaic of the promise kept. To be passed to the future, to generations who have yet to know this miracle in the desert. The finale is very organic for me as well. To say, you know, there's got to come a point in a time where every person makes a decision and they say, uh, when the world is filled with darkness, I'm going to be a person that's a light. Uh, I'm going to be a person that says, here am I, God, and uh, really stands up for the Jewish people and for the nation of Israel and fights darkness wherever they are. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong, its top reached to heaven, and it was visible to the end of the whole earth. Its leaves were beautiful, and its fruit abundant, and in it was food for all. Lift up your eyes now, and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants. That's all we have for this week's episode of Simcha, a celebration of life. As always, we'd love to hear from you, so please send us a message on Facebook at Spirit Sister Productions. From me, Aaron Halevi, and the Simcha team, have an awesome week ahead. Mm-hmm.